System State Backups In our previous backup videos, when we used NT Backup, we've seen an entry for System State. So what is it and why should you care? Well, the System State refers to the components of the local system that aren't directly accessible through the regular file system. Included in the System State are the contents of the Sysvol folder, Active Directory in the case of domain controllers, the registry on all servers, workstations and servers, and the class registration databases. It also includes the system boot files and any certificate services that you may have installed in your domain. Now backing up the system state on a computer allows you to fully restore a system to a new disk and retain all of your settings including things like your local and domain user accounts and your permissions and rights that those accounts hold. The biggest downfall regarding system state backups is that they must be performed locally. This means that you must run the NT Backup program locally on every single computer that you want to run the system state. Whilst regular file and directory backups can be performed over a network connection, system state backups cannot. But there is a way around this of course. The solution here would be to schedule an automatic backup of the system state data on a daily basis and then place the backup files on a local shared folder and then we can have a backup routine that backs up the shared folders at each location. Hey, it's not the prettiest solution, but it works, and it's a far better alternative than taking the risk of not backing up this data at all. So to perform a system state backup, what we'll need to do is we'll click on Start, All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, and then we'll run the backup utility. Now this starts our Backup and Restore wizard, and we'll simply click Next. We'll choose to Backup Files and Settings, and we'll choose Next. Now we won't back up all the information on our computer, we only want to back up the system state, so we'll choose the bottom option, so we can choose what to back up, and we'll choose next. And now we'll come over here and we'll expand my computer, and down here we'll place a check in the system state box. And then we'll choose next again. Now we need to provide a location to where we're going to save our backup. So we'll back up to our desktop, and we'll simply call this one system state backup, and we'll choose next, and then our wizard's finished. Now backup's going to start and it's going to prepare using Shadow Copy, so I'll just pause this video and we'll return once the system state backup is completed. Okay, our system state backup's now complete. Now as we've shown with the other backups we've performed earlier in this video series, performing a backup for the system state is a really easy task to perform. The biggest challenge we have is in performing a system state restore. Now performing a system state restore is not an easy task, mainly because the files that you need to restore on a system are in use. And I'm referring to things like the registry, or in the case of a domain controller, Active Directory. Also with a domain controller, replication with other domain controllers can hinder your efforts, because replication can overwrite your newly restored data, because the restored data happens to be older and has outdated update sequence numbers. So to restore Active Directory and the sysvol volume which is on a Windows 2003 server domain controller, you must reboot the system and then restart in Directory Services Restore mode. So to do this, simply reboot your system and when it starts, you press F8 at the boot menu and then choose Directory Services Restore mode. Okay, our system's now restarting. What we need to do is hit F8 and then we'll need to boot into the Directory Services Restore mode. And this will start our Windows 2003 domain controller in safe mode so we now can perform a system state restore. OK, as you can see Windows is now running in safe mode, we'll simply click OK. Now take note though, you might experience a few errors telling you that Active Directory services are failing to load. Now this is OK and it is expected as you're not currently running the server as a domain controller. So what's happening here is the system's booting up with a smaller subset of users and group accounts which are stored in the registry, not in Active Directory. And because it isn't functioning as a domain controller at this moment, it isn't using the user and group accounts that would normally be associated with the domain. Okay, now that our Windows 2003 server has booted up into our safe mode, we can now restart our NT backup. Now I mentioned earlier about replication problems and how if you have other domain controllers in your environment that they may overwrite the information that we're about to restore with data that has a newer update sequence number. Now how we fix this problem is by performing an authoritative restore. An authoritative restore flags the restored Active Directory objects as authoritative, 
which means that the next time replication takes place, this data will now be considered the most current, and this data will replicate to the other domain controllers and overwrite their copies of the data. If we don't mark this restore as authoritative, then the opposite will occur and our other domain controllers will in fact overwrite this data. So the first thing we need to do is restore the data. So we'll click next and then we'll choose restore files and settings and we'll click next. Now we need to choose which backup we want to restore from. Now NT Backup does keep track using its catalogue of the previous backups that we've performed. Now currently we've only done the two. So we need to expand file, expand our system state and then select our system state backup. And then we'll choose next. Okay, and we're done. We now get a summary of what we've chosen to restore. It tells us from which backup that we're actually restoring from. The type is a file backup. We're restoring to the original locations. And here's an interesting one. Existing files do not replace. Well, that's not entirely true. Here we are going to restore our files to the original location. And yes, they are going to overwrite any files which do exist. Otherwise the restore simply won't work. So we'll click finish and we will see we get a message that says restoring our system state will always override our current system state unless we're restoring to an alternate location. So we've just explained that anyway so we'll choose OK and now our restore will begin. I'll just pause this video and we'll return once the restore has been completed. OK, so our system state data has now been restored. You can click on Report if you like to see some information, as always, but we'll just simply click on Close. Now NT Backup now prompts us if we want to restart our computer, and we're going to select No, because if we reboot our server now, other domain controllers in our environment will replicate their data to this server and overwrite the restore that we've just performed. Now remember I spoke about the update sequence numbers earlier? Well now we need to run the NTDSUtil tool to modify the update sequence numbers on this server. And that will mark this server's data as authoritative. So this server's data will appear to be the latest data and this data will then be replicated to our other domain controllers. So what we'll do is we'll open up a command prompt and then we'll type in NTDSUtil and we'll hit enter. Now at any time we can type in a question mark and hit enter and see what commands we actually have available with the NTDSUtil and as you can see we do have quite a few options available. Now we need to perform an authoritative restore. So we'll be using this option up here and that's exactly what we need to type in. Now to make my life easier and, and rather than typing it all in I'm just going to cut and paste this information and then we'll hit enter and you can see that the prompt visually changes to identify the fact that we're now in authoritative restore mode. So now if you want to see what sub options we have under authoritative restore mode, we can simply type another question mark and then hit enter. Okay, we've got six options down here. First of all, we can restore the database. Now this setting will modify the update sequence numbers for all of the Active Directory objects, making them authoritative for the entire domain. So what this actually does is increases the update sequence numbers of all Active Directory objects by 100,000. Then we can choose to restore the database without a version increase. Now this setting doesn't modify the update sequence numbers of the Active Directory objects. Next we can choose to restore a specific object now this setting modifies the update sequence numbers for all Active Directory objects that we specify, again making them authoritative for the entire domain. We can also choose to restore an object without a version increase, and of course this setting won't modify the update sequence numbers of Active Directory objects. And then we can choose to restore a subtree, which will update the sequence numbers for all of the objects in Active Directory. And finally, we could choose to restore a subtree without a version increase. So what we'll do is we'll choose the option to restore the database and we'll hit enter and then we'll get a message asking us to confirm whether we want to perform this authoritative restore and so we'll choose yes and then we can see it opens the DIT database and now you can see what it's actually done is increase the attribute version numbers on all of our Active Directory objects by a hundred thousand now the reason it does this is because it's very unlikely that any of our domain controllers update sequence numbers have increased by 100,000 during the time that it took for us to perform this restore. So now when our server's back on the network, joining the part of the domain, the other domain controllers will take a look at the update sequence numbers on this domain controller and go, hang on a sec, 
your numbers are much newer than us, that means you must have some information which we need and then replication will start to occur from this server to the others. Okay, so now that this is complete, we can simply type in quit and we'll have to do that twice. And now that we've done this, we can reboot our server and replication of the newly restored objects will take place. And because of these update sequence numbers on these restored objects will be substantially higher than those on our other domain controllers, they are going to overwrite the objects on our other domain controllers, which is what we set out to do in the first place.